everyone. So today I would like to show you how uh, the d3.scale band method works. I created a simple example to show you how you could implement uh, this very useful function that would you that you would use on a bar chart. Um, but first, let's walk through our code. So here we have a variable called data. Data is an array, and it contains objects, each with a name and height keys. And basically, the height the objects are the tallest buildings in the world. That's what they represent. And we have the name of the tower and how tall the tower is. Okay, down here we create another vari variable, SVG, and it's selecting our SVG chart here. We also have a little bit of CSS. And this is giving the SVG the SVG its height and width, each set to 500 pixels, and the background color to pink. Okay, so, and I know this isn't the way most people do it. This is just an example on on how a band scale would, would work, or scale band would work, I'm sorry. So then we have our variable X array. And X-Array is, is a new array that is returned from this data.map function. And it's returning an array of, our, of all the names we have on, in, our data, in our data variable. So let's console log our X-Array so you can see what I'm talking about. Let's see, console log. And you can see we have an array down here. Let's clear it and refresh the page just so that's the only thing that's popping up. And you can see we have an array of all the names in our data variable, in our data array. OK. So further down, we're going to delete our console log. And while we're at it, we're going to clear the console too. And here we have a variable called xscale. And here we're putting to use our, the method d3.scale band. OK, so let's read in the d3 docs what scale band does. We're going to go control find scale band. Scale band constructs a new band scale with empty domain, the unit range 0 to 1, no padding, no rounding, and center alignment. Okay, we have this, which is kind of brief of what scale band does. A better example I found is going to this website here. It's called D3 in depth, and it gives you a more precise, uh, it gives you a better understanding. It says when creating bar charts, scale bands help to determine the geometry of the bars, taking into account padding between each bar. The domain is specified as an array of values one value for each band, and the range as the minimum and maximum extents of the band. In effect, scale band will split the range into n bands, where n is the number of values in the domain array, and compute the positions and widths of the bands taking into account any specified padding. So this is how why it's really useful to use a scale band. So basically, we on our code pen here, we provided the domain of our x array. So again, if our X array is a, a, an array containing all of our names from our data variable up here. So because we gave it, um, we gave it our domain an array, it can now scale band will now be able to compute the positions and widths of the bands, taking into account any specified padding. So that's very useful. That way we don't have to hard code the width and this will evenly distribute our, our, our data points in our SVG. A range, obviously, it will, uh, it will keep our, our domain 
or the data points that we that we put in here it'll keep it in within our SVG chart and here we're giving it a padding inner we're gonna delete that for now and I'll show you why in a second we create this variable uh, rect and it selects all rect right now we don't have any uh, rectangles in our HTML so it's returning an empty data set and here we have uh, the data method and what this does it parses our data values making sure everything gets executed once per each item in our array so however many items we are passing in uh, here it's gonna do this operation however many times so in this case we have one two three four five this function is going to is going to be executed five times and then dot enter it creates a placeholder element um, if one does not exist in this case because we don't have any rect elements on in our SVG it's going to append uh, here it's going to append uh, however many recs we need depending on how many data points we pass it in so here's where the fun happens the attribute again we're set we're setting an attribute the x coordinate and here we give it a function it returns x scale dot d name so we're passing in our x we're passing the d dot name into x scale which means basically here it's going to evenly distribute the array so d dot name being all the names in our in our uh, data array it's we're passing it into x scale and our range the the output that's coming out is going to be within our SVG chart our then we're setting the attribute y and because you want it right side up we're going to return 500 minus parse and dot deed height so this 500 is coming from um, our the height of our SVG this could this should be placed as a variable so it could easily be changed uh, in one place so usually you would have it up here but in this case I hard coded it in and then we're converting our height our d dot height which is this up here into a number and we're subtracting our height from our from 500 so that's what makes it our uh, our graph right side up <coughs> excuse me so in essence it'll depending on the height it'll start from here and go down start from here go down again this is all depending on the height that we give it and then we have the width now this is what's so cool about scale band with scale band we have this this function that we can use called band width and what band width does it gives you the widths of each band <laughs> So in essence, if I give it an inner padding, right now we don't have any inner padding set, but let's let's do that now. All right. So we're gonna chain on another another function called inner padding. And we're gonna give it 0 0.2. Okay. I think I Let's see how you're supposed to use inner padding. Oh, padding inner. And it's supposed to be an array. Okay, padding inner. Okay, so let's call padding inner. And it's supposed to be there you go. Zero point two. And you can see that the width of our rectangles changed based on the inner padding that we gave it. So we can increase that to show you what I'm 
to give you more of an example, let's increase it to a 0 0.9. And you can see our bars are now very thin and the inner padding is quite large. So let's just change that to a 5. Okay, so that's evenly distributed in our SVG chart. And then let's do padding outer too. Padding outer, give it an array, 0 0.2. And you can see we have this padding outside now. And again, our the width of each rectangle is, is being resized depending on the padding we give it. So we're going to put 0 0.6. And you see our bars went got a little bit thinner again as we increased the size of the padding outside of the bars. And for the last one, we have attribute, the height attribute, which again is specifying how tall these bars should be. Now, I know this is going to seem kind of dumb, or at least it did to me. Uh, it took me a, a, quite a while to figure this out. But height is not going from bottom to top. It's still going from top to bottom. Again, our Y is starting from up here and going down. Our Y is starting from up here and going down. So just keep that in mind that we reversed it here, right, by subtracting it, or subtracting the height of our SVG, and then subtracting the uh, height, our D dot height data point that we're getting from the data from the data variable here, and then we're setting it here. But that's not changing the way this is rendering. This is always going from top to bottom. So because our x and y values here, our height is 365 pixels down. Same thing with the rest. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. And don't get confused that somehow this uh, reverse and now re-renders from bottom to top. That's not the case. And that is my explanation on how scale band